Hem loaders, bullet casters, welcome back. Today I want to introduce to you one of the very many tools that you will use as a hand loader. You might already use this as a machinist, as a gunsmith, maybe even as an automotive technician or mechanic. It's not just the hand loading world where you're going to use one. So this is called a digital caliper. It gives a digital readout, makes things pretty simple, uh, especially if you're not real familiar with these types of measurements. And I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how it works. But first, let's start with just taking it out of the box like we did. What we have here, if you notice this gap, that gap is there intentionally. Anytime you store one of these tools, you want to make sure that it's open just a little bit. And reason being is because the way moisture and rust and everything can sort of just kind of collaborate and conglomerate all in that area, keeping them open just a hair might very well save you from having to replace them down the road. Now to make sure that our caliper is clean and ready for measurement, all it takes is a little simple strip of paper, put it in there without too much force, and just slide it on through. We're perfectly zeroed. And then... We know that we're clean right there, so we should be able to take good measurements. So, if you've never used one of these before and you're getting into hand loading, what you're dealing with is some measurements that go way beyond inch here, eighth of an inch there, half an inch, uh, give or takes. So we're often going to be working within measurements of a thousandth of an inch. Okay, so just to give perspective of a thousandth of an inch, that is about a quarter of the thickness of this little piece of paper, okay? Because this was four thousandths. So a quarter of this is almost incomprehensible. And this is not even guaranteed to give that good of a measurement, but it's generally close enough for our purposes, okay? So as you saw, we might have to measure out some case lengths. We may also, from time to time, have to measure a bullet. So if this is for the caliber I believe it is, it should be about a .452. Looky there. This is for a 45. Now we might also have to measure the uh, overall length of an assembled round to make sure that we have loaded it properly. And this is easy to do because we have a flat point here. Uh, but yeah, so we got two inches. So two inches and 38 thousandths of an inch. I prefer dial. However, this does have its uses. Let's say that we wanted this to be our starting point for a measurement. I can zero it out right here. This is now my zero point. From this on... I can check and see if maybe this other round, well, this other round is 55 one thousandths of an inch. I could have done this with the dial caliper, but I would have just had to do it with uh, some math, some scratch paper, or just a caliper, or a really fast thinking math mind, which I don't have. Uh, so I hope you can kind of see where the value is in something of this nature. Like I said, we are not just limited to the world of hand loading. Um, we're going to zero this back out. What if you're looking for bearings? Maybe for a chainsaw. And you're having a hard time, so you've got to measure. Well, that's what we've got here. And because everything seems to be made in China now, we'll just hit the China button. Boom! <laughs> 37 millimeters. Or, by U.S. standards, it's got an outer diameter of 1 inch, 456 thousandths. Okay, but I might also need to know the inside diameter. That, my friends, is what this is helpful for. Where you might also use this to take some rough measurements of the inside of a pistol case. Whatever you need. So now we know the inside diameter of this bearing is roughly... 0.590, 590 one thousandths of an inch. Okay, so with something like this tool here, it's real quick and easy to pull out 
and get your measurements. It's real simple to operate it. The learning curve is uh, pretty easy because you're not having to read manual dials. However, like I said, uh, consider learning the manual one because, well, you know, batteries, I don't like dealing with them. And I know that as soon as I put a fresh battery in here, most likely I'm going to end up leaving this thing in a toolbox for a year, not use it, and then I'll come back and it's corroded. <laughs> so that being said, I tend to uh, make it a point to try to take the batteries out, but that one's going to fuss with me, so I'll do that off camera. I am going to speculate that I might have paid $35 for this, you know, 10 years ago. More than that, maybe. And I figure you can probably go ahead and figure maybe somewhere between 50 and 100. So, anyways, I hope this was helpful. And I hope this is going to put one more little feather of knowledge in your hat to get you off to good hand loading. All right, folks. Thank you. God bless. And happy Thanksgiving.